Doctor. Something wrong. Yes. There's something odd about that man, and I can't quite pinpoint it. There's something wrong about a man who never smiles, whose conversation never varies from the routine of the job, and who won't talk about his background. I see. Spock. I mean that it's, uh, it's odd for a non-Vulcan. Um, the ears make all of the difference. I find your argument strewn with gaping defects in logic. You bet your pointed ears I am. I should have never reconnected his mouth. It's Genesis. The name of the place we're going is Genesis. Genesis? Yes, Genesis. How can you be deaf with ears like that? Well, what do you know? I finally got the last word. Well, greetings, everyone, and peaceful Sabbath to everyone. Yes, please. Let him who has ears, no matter how big they are, hear. Um, and I want, this is going to be a theme that is so cool. I actually got this uh, small little booklet. Nice kind of, I think it's leather or whatever. It's very nice. 52 Hebrew words every Christian should know. So it's not trying to get into deep thing. It's got short, like a little short meditation intended to go through and maybe uh, pick a word a day or however often you want to do it. I'll probably do some different uh, podcasts on these because they're so wonderful. And I love it. The first two words that come up. The first one is Shema. Shema means to hear. Shema, to hear. Those who have ears, let them hear. I want to just read you a little bit of this, and then we'll get uh, deeper into the message here. Do you ever wake up in a fog of stress and anxiety, unable to focus because you're being pulled in multiple directions? The stress of work, unresolved issues at home, unanswered emails, sickness, tiredness, financial pressures, and so many other things in this modern world can leave many of us feeling flat and then able to focus in the morning. But while stress may seem like a modern issue, perhaps there's an ancient solution. For thousands of years, Jewish believers have spoken a prayer the moment they wake up that focuses their attention on God rather than the things of this world. The prayer is called the Shema, which is a Hebrew word that means to hear or listen. The prayer comes directly from Deuteronomy 6, which reads, I'll just do a little bit of it here. Hear, O Israel, Yehovah our God. Yehovah is one. Love Yehovah our God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all of your strength. Tell these, you know, to repeat them to your children and such. It goes on. The word Shema implies action, though. Similarly, we understand this idea when Jesus said, He who has ears, let him hear, which was the way of telling his followers to listen to his words and obey. As my friend Rabbi uh, Evan Mofat Mofik says, when God says Shema, it is an invitation for us to listen, to respond, to appreciate, to understand, and to act. To act. I'm going to get to the second word in here uh, a little bit later. But let's get back uh, in, on, on this now because I want to read a few more words from our Bibles now, all right? For those who have ears to hear. So it's a little warm, warm here today. Matthew eleven fifteen says, if you have ears, then hear. Mark 4, 23 says, those who have ears, I think it's pretty much most of us, to hear with, let them 
Hear! Shema! He also said to them in verse 24 of Mark 4, Pay attention to what you are hearing. Revelation 2, 7. The one who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Repeat it again in Revelation 3, 22. The one who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Did you notice that? Twice there. What do we hear with? The ears? Wait, wait, wait. We're missing what's being said there. Hear what the Spirit says. So the question, is it even possible then to truly hear with just the nephish part of us, right? The physical, mortal ears. What is it that allows us to hear God? Spirit. We'll talk about it as the heart, but that's a metaphor as we know. It really comes down to spirit. Ears equal hear. Aside from Spock and the other big uh, Star Trek ear folks there, do we not get a picture from Scripture that if there is a deeper association to hearing than just using these knee fish ears? If you see what I see in Scripture, and I hope we can look a little deeper into that today, this explains why some with ears, even though they may appear to be listening, but they just don't seem to hear. Could the clue here be to not listen with our mortal human ears, but instead use them as a tool to hear with our whole heart? Spirit, heart. That's really the spirit, the heart. When he talks about the heart, you really were talking about the spirit in man and humans, right? Look at Matthew 13, 16. I'll read it here. Matthew 16, 13, Jesus' words. But blessed are your eyes. Blessed are your eyes. He's right. He's talking to those there. For they see. They see him. They're there. They can see him. And your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you. Now, whenever you see that, verily, verily I say unto you, it's like, listen up. Time to listen up. Open them up good and wide here. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men desire to see the things which ye see and saw them not. In other words, uh, they would have longed to been there with those people. And see what Jesus, Yeshua, was saying. Listen. See. They would have loved that. But they heard them not because they weren't there, right, in person. Verse 18. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the evil one and snatcheth away that which hath been sown in his heart. This is he who has sown by the wayside. And when you read Matthew 13, don't, we're not going to go through, all through it, but we're going to do quite a bit of it today, actually. Uh, you'll see a lot of that. So we just need to pause. Pause for a moment and reflect on that. Because if and when we listen with our ears, but hear with our hearts, with our spirit, then with that, there's a call to action. Action. If no action when one hears and listens, then the words are merely idle words, useless words, words sown by the wayside. God's words, Yeshua, Jesus' words 
are calls to action. James 1.22 says, But prove yourself, yourselves doers of the word. Right? Doer is an action word, isn't it? But not just hearers who deceive themselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks at his natural face in the mirror. For once he has looked at himself and gone away, he has immediately forgotten what kind of person he was. So then to complete that thought, I'm going to go to verse 25. Now from the complete Jewish Bible, I like the way that it expresses it so clearly here. Verse 25 of, of uh, James 1. But if a person looks closely into the perfect Torah, all right, the Torah, uh, other Bibles will say the law. You you know, I, I just, there's something about that word law that really gets messed around with a lot. But really what it means is the perfect, that's what James says, Torah, which are the teachings of Moses, but really what they really are, the teachings and lessons from God. For us, yes, they become law, but they're lessons and teachings for us. So we want to heed these things. So if a person looks closely into the perfect Torah, which gives freedom, and then continues in it, becoming not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, it requires then that he the work, the work, the doer of the work that it requires, then he will be blessed in what he does. Another action word. So I say, here with the heart, what that really means is, allow me to just to repeat myself again, hear Shema with the spirit in man. We often render it as the heart because of the thought you know uh, uh, that's where our heart is there's where our treasure is that's our treasure chest of the soul being expressed as the human spirit here's what uh, uh, the wise elder who reprimanded Job's three foolish friends all right and he proclaimed in Job 32 8 but there is a spirit in man and the breath of the Almighty gives them understanding. The breath that God breathes to us. What is breath also uh, like spirit? It talks about it like spirit, the breath. How can one hear and not hear? Well, I think it's got to be that they've muted their communication device placed within us by our Creator. They muted that. 1 Corinthians 2.11 says, For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Hearing God, it's not a nafish thing. It's not a physical thing. We can't hear God through the physical things. Only, only do we hear God by the Spirit when we allow that part to be dwelt, our home here, to be dwelt with the Holy Spirit, right? Proverbs 20, 27 says, The Spirit of a man, the Spirit of a man is the lamp of the Lord, searching all the inner depths of his heart. Wow. So what about hearing but not understanding? How can we reckon that out? We just looked at the answer in the previous verses, yet there are and there were the crowds that, there, that Jesus Yeshua was there speaking to, even to his disciples that often didn't understand, right? Were they not tuned into the correct frequency? 
Matthew 13, 1 through 3. So beginning of Matthew 13 now in the, from the complete Jewish Bible. That same day Yeshua went out of the house and sat down by the lake. But such a large crowd gathered around him that he got into a boat and he sat there while the crowd stood on the shore. He told them many things in parables. Ah, the parable frequency. Let's get tuned into the parable frequency. Yeshua then went on to proclaim the parable of the farmer, right? Sowing his seed, where, as you know, uh, some of it fell by the roadside and was eaten by, by birds. Some fell on rocky ground where the soil was shallow and dried up by the sun. And then some fell among the thorns that was choked out. You can read all that in Matthew 13, but I want to jump now right to verse 10. Then the disciples came and asked Yeshua, Jesus, why are you speaking to them, them in parables? He answered, because it has been given to you to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, the secrets of the kingdom of God. But it has not been given to them. For anyone who has something will be given more, so that he will have plenty. But from anyone who has nothing, even what he does have will be taken away. Wow, this almost seems like uh, he's saying, you know, the rich get richer, the poor get poorer. Is he being unfair here? Wait a minute. I, I, that, that could be a whole other sermon here, but I don't have time for that. I just want to remind us something that we can see still in Matthew, but in chapter 7, verses 7 and 8, all right, about muting their hearing device. But not only that, on top of it, how do we get that tuning device tuned in? Verse 7. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be open to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And he who seeks, remember, we're talking humbly here. He who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. Don't let anyone give you the excuse of, oh, yeah, I, I don't hear from God. I've never heard the spirit his spirit talk to me or stand at a distance if you say to them uh, that you heard that you shema hear the spirit of god just because they have muted their channel doesn't mean that you can't it's the spiritual ears some simply listen some organizations tend to kind of shun that off. You know, if you say you're hearing the Spirit of God, they're, how, how's that work? How do you do that? All right? It doesn't mean that those, though, with spiritual ears can't hear. What doers are, what doers do is that they do knock on God's door. The adversary also has a door that people can knock upon, right? And also, if the rooms of a person's heart are not occupied by the Spirit of God, then the adversary will gladly come in and make his home there. The adversary is the ultimate home squatter. We have a, you could put on his business card, all right? Have vacant home, we'll, uh, we'll squat. That, should, that would be his business card, his motto. No, seek, ask, knock. Now, have we ever felt like God is God silent on us? We should then just really pause and ask ourselves if maybe it is not us with all the busy things we have in the world as we were reminded we forgot to stop and pause and to listen 
Maybe it's us who have gone silent on God. It happens to me. I get crazy busy sometimes and and I think back sometimes a few hours into the day and go, oh, I'm just so weak. You know what I what I didn't do? I got up in the morning and went to Facebook instead of uh, to, to my Bible. Sometimes I have felt that God wasn't listening to me. You know, and it felt like, God, do you hear me? Not his fault. So what I'm saying is, what a blessing. Really, what a blessing the Sabbath is. Because if if you're one of those that's still employed, you're, we're still grinding at the employment grinding wheel, right? And sometimes we get up a little later, we're tired, we had a hard day or whatever it is. Sometimes we uh, skip past that. And then all we hear is the great uh, caco cacophony. Cacophony is just means it's a big, just a blur of noise, a bunch of clanging noise. The cacophony of the world gets to us. We can't know all of God's truths in this lifetime. So we must, we mustn't ever stop knocking, can we? We can't stop seeking. We can't stop asking, knocking, communication with God. Prayer, though, however, is not just a list of wishes for ourselves or even for others, although that's very great and commendable, commendable, right? Yes, we should lift others' names who are in need to God. But that's the ask some of the asking part, right? God loves us. He wants to hear. He wants to hear that. He wants us to know that it's on our hearts. Yet we have one mouth and we have two ears. One on each side. Oh, there's the balloons going off. <laughs> That's what one of the things built into Apple computers, you know, if you make a certain gesture, you know, it, it decides it wants to chime in. Yeah. Well, that's good to listen. You notice that? That was actually pretty good. It went off right at the time when I was talking about listening. Yeah, that is the happy balloon time. All right? So let's not forget to look at prayer more than just a, a single communication, but a two-way communication. Two ears speak and listen with the ears of the spirit, the center of our chest, the heart, meaning the spirit, Yes, we need to use the ears of our heart. We have God's written word for our eyes to see. We can look at those and see. We can see God in that. We can see, he talks about seeing God face to face. Well, that's how we do that, reading his, his word, getting closer and understanding him better. So always keep seeking, asking, and knocking. It's really like breathing. We stop breathing, we die. We stop asking and seeking and knocking and two-way communication. Listen. In other words, part of that is just to sit there, be silent, listen. He may not always have something to say to us at that time. Maybe we get up and go from there though, and we go over and we just kind of open up the Bible, see what comes out. Many times I've done that, just to kind of open it up and plop what comes out, and it can be pretty amazing, even though I didn't verbally hear him in my the depths of my soul. Um, I want to remind us here something from the great prophet, the two greatest prophets in the Bible. We have Isaiah. Yeshayahu is his, the name that he, he was known by. Yeshayahu, Isaiah. Yeshayahu means salvation of Yehovah. Same thing, the same exact meaning as the other greatest or the greater of the prophets, Yeshua Jesus himself, right? The long version of his name, just like Joshua, was Yehoshua, which means Yehovah's salvation. So we have Yeshayahu, salvation of Yehovah, and uh, Yehoshua, 
Yehovah's salvation. Same meeting by these great prophets. Listen to this from Isaiah, that he reminds us this in chapter 55, verse 6. Seek ye Yehovah while he may be found. Call or ask ye upon him while he is near. That's the American Standard Version. Look what happened in Nineveh, right? When they turned, they repented. They turned, they repent, they turned, and they repented, right? From the hearts. There's another special Hebrew word. Now I'm going to get into here. Got a little bit of time just left, so we'll we'll go through this fairly quickly here now, though. But it's uh, shuv, shuv. Uh, there we go. Shuv, meaning to turn back. Here, and then turn back. Wow. Uh, our Bible, our English Bible often speaks of repentance, which we usually define as regret or being sorry, but the Hebrew word that is translated as repentance comes from the Hebrew word shuv, which means to turn, or more accurately, to turn back. Moses was turned to told back. He was turned to shuv. Repentance is more, uh, is more than just a feeling of guilt or regret. It is making a course correction for your life. It's deciding to turn away from where you are currently headed and turn back toward God. And I won't keep going on that. Got to keep moving along here. But um, So we turn, we turn about. Um, now, I want to get back to, before I get out of Matthew 13, I want to get back to Matthew 13 here in verse 13, where Jesus Yeshua is saying, here is why... I speak to them in parables. It's almost like the world. Why doesn't the world understand? Continuing, they look without seeing. He's in the wrong eyes. Again, consider why they look and don't see. Who are they sharing the living quarters of their inner soul with? All right, continuing. Uh, Matthew 13, 13. And they listen without hearing or understanding. That is, in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, again, Yeshayahu uh, 6, 9 through 10, which says, You will keep on hearing, but never understand, and keep on seeing, but never perceive, because the heart of of this people has become dull. And with their ears, they barely hear, and their eyes they have closed, so as to not see with their eyes, or hear with their ears, or understand with their heart, the spirit in man. They've muted that. And do not then, right? They do shavaya, which is sh the shuv word we just said, meaning to turn, to turn back their hearts so that I could heal them. Jesus then goes on to tell his disciples, how blessed are your eyes because you see and your ears because you hear. And then he goes on to explain the the, uh, the parable of the sower there. One last part before we get out of Matthew 13 is verse 24. Yeshua put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. All right? Remember, God didn't start it off with the mess that we see now. He started off with the Garden of Eden. He sowed a perfectly wonderful field. But while people were sleeping, humankind falling asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat. Then he went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed uh, heads of grain, the weeds also appeared. 
The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Good seed? Where the weeds have come up now, he answered, An enemy has done this. The servant asked him, Then do you want us to go and pull them up? He answered, No, because if you pull up the weeds, you will might uproot some of the wheat at the same time. Let them both grow together. Here we are in this world mixed in with weeds. And then at until harvest time. And then at harvest time, I will tell the reapers to collect the weeds first, tie them into bundles to be burned, but to gather the wheat into my barn. Gather the wheat into his barn. So ask, seek, knock. That's how we see. That's how we hear. That's how we know, understand. Because we hear with our heart. The one who sowed good seed, Yeshua explains there in verses 37 and 39, that he was the son, that's, that's the son of man, son of God. The adversary is stirring the pot all the time though, isn't he? The adversary would love nothing more than to sweep us right up along with the chaotic state that's surrounding us. But be strong, be strong, be secure in our Savior's arms as we pray in the midst of the fire. Pray, two-way communication. Hear, Shema. I'll emphasize as I close with this from Second Chronicles 7, 14 and 15. Second Chronicles 7, 14. If my people who are called by my name, who are those that are called by his name? Here it is, right here. Those that are humble shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face. We don't do that with physical eyes, do we? We have to do it with the spirit that's in us to seek his face and then turn, shuv. That's what it says right here. Turn about from their wicked ways. Then I will hear, I will shema from heaven, and I will forgive their sins and heal their land. Now mine eyes shall be open and mine ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. Dear Eternal Father, thank you so for the words that you give us, that we have your words to look at so that we can better see you face to face, to better know your Son, our soon coming King of Kings, that will restore the garden perfectly as you planted it here on earth. He will bring your kingdom here. We thank you for your plan together. We thank you for the Sabbath that you give us this time to stop and to shema, to hear, and then to turn about when we need to. Thank you for these times. Give you thanks. We pray for those who need your healing, that you remember those. We remember them because they are beaten down from this world also. They may not be out on the employment uh, grinding wheel, but day after day, the pains and things that we have, we pray for your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it, even, as it is in heaven. In our Savior's name, we pray. Amen. Thank you.